please find a comfortable place to sit. Place your hands on your legs. Close your eyes or keep a soft focus on the screen. Take a deep breath in and out. A deep breath in and out. Continue to breathe deeply and slowly. Feel relaxation flowing down from your head into your neck, into your shoulders, down your arms, and into your hands and your fingers. Relax down into your chest, into your stomach, and down your legs, into your feet. Continue to breathe deeply and slowly. Okay. Welcome to the twelfth lecture of my happiness class. Mental techniques is the topic. Mental techniques for feeling happier. The most important techniques are those that involve quieting the mind. As far as the impact on your happiness, these techniques are truly central. They are the main means, if you will, for mind training. I spoke before of mindfulness. Mindfulness is truly a powerful technique for feeling better, and achieving more happiness over the long term. Mindfulness is simply being aware. Being aware of what is happening now. It is the awareness of the present moment without judgment. With simply being aware without judging it. Some would find this very difficult, and staying present in the moment isn't easy. It's something that you learn over time as you keep practicing it. That the time that you spend being mindful increases, that the periods of time increase. So, mindfulness is being aware without judgment. Just being aware usually means that you're going to have to find some way of taking your mind off of thinking. It's going to keep slipping back into thinking, 
That's just the natural path of mind, if you will. But to find some way of just paying attention. Just paying attention to your breathing. The in and out of breathing. Takes your mind focusing on something and focuses it on the now. You can simply be aware of the sounds around you. You can be aware of movement, but you don't judge it. You simply observe it. Awareness, then, can be anything that you're doing as well, whether you're washing dishes or walking up the stairs or waving to someone. You can be aware when you're talking to someone. In fact, that will really help in your relationships, because when you're being aware, when you're talking, you're not being reactive. Mindfulness is powerful in that it brings some more quiet into your mind. It is also a means of taking the power of your emotions out of feeling them. In mindfulness, you don't resist feelings. You don't get angry that you're angry. You simply observe it. You observe your feelings. Let them pass through you like a cloud passing through the sky. You don't resist them. What you resist persists because what you focus on will loom larger in your mind. You don't fight your feelings. You don't fight your thoughts. You watch them. You observe them. Let them pass through. When you feel like you're being pulled out of the now, pay attention to your breathing. Pay attention to the sounds. Don't think about them. Don't have commentary going on. Just be aware. Simple awareness of what is now has many benefits for the mind, many benefits for taking the power of emotions out of any situation. As I said, you don't resist it, you observe it. And when you observe an emotion without engaging it, to simply observe it, it does take the power out. Emotions don't have any power of their own. The only power that an emotion has is what you give it. Your mind gives it power. It cannot possess you if you don't let it. And as I said, don't fight it. Just watch it. Observe it. And the power in that emotion to control you will be greatly reduced. That in itself is a great benefit. But Eckhart Tolle and others will say there's another really big benefit from mindfulness. I have to wait for the motorcycle passing through here. It is what he calls presence with a capital P. And by that, what he means is, is that the source of mind, with the capital S, is always there, but we are always kind of blocking its, its awareness of it. But he says that the thinking mind always thinks that it has to um, solve problems, has to reason through them if you're going to be uh, prepared. And if you're going to be able to deal with anything, you've got to be thinking all the time. And he says that is exactly wrong. Some things, yes, you have to think about when you're engaged in something like, like um, uh, calling in to get some tickets for an airplane, uh, taking care of, of small routine things. But he says most of the guidance that you need here is going to be in this presence, the capital P. As many have said, that if you 
simply quiet your mind, you will be getting communications, not in a voice, but in feelings. You will find uh, instincts and creative impulses and some excitement that move you to do things. And they say that this presence with the capital P has the larger picture. It has an intelligence beyond your imagination, and it really knows what the bigger picture is. And the small reasoning mind has very little information. So you gain the ability to take the power out of, out of emotions you don't want to feel. You gain some more peace, and maybe you get some really good advice from a higher source. So mindfulness is truly an important method to use, and it's one of the reasons why it's being taught in schools and is now being said to be a major part of, of psychotherapy, and uh, employees are being taught about mindfulness as well because it increases their productivity. Mindfulness is truly an important method to learn. And it's simply being aware in the moment. The more you practice it, the longer you're able to stay mindful, the more benefit you get out of it. It can be quite frustrating at first because you're constantly noticing you're you're uh, always getting back on the train of thought. Keep practicing it. It will become more and more automatic. It may take some time, but if there is one thing you can learn to truly have a big impact on how you feel and on your happiness, mindfulness is really important. Meditation is a deeper type of mindfulness. In mindfulness, as I said, you can be actively doing things and be mindful. Meditation is when you're sitting still, that you are trying to remove yourself from activity and the thoughts and the stimuli, if you will, although the main point of meditation is still being present in the now. You can be aware, but what you are allowing is some time as you're doing this, trying to sit quietly, allowing for some time for your mind to sink deeper, deeper into stillness, where you can reach deeper depths of this quietness, deeper depths of calm, more awareness of the joy, peace, and love that is inherent in you, and for guidance from what might be called a higher source. Meditation is also a major recommendation by psychotherapists, and um, it is widely practiced now. It has become more and more a technique that people are using all around the world. So mindfulness and meditation are becoming very popular means, and they're very effective means for changing how you feel. As I said, you don't fight your feelings. You observe them. And with meditation, you can sit longer and go deeper, which is one, one of the benefits of just sitting quietly. Many speak of, of you know, how you sit, etc. Probably the most important here is, is that you keep um, your spine uh, in a straight position. And the reason there is, is because it's too easy to fall asleep if you're slouching. So it's just a means to 
Try to stay awake and aware rather than falling asleep. Practicing mindfulness and meditation, it calms the mind, it reduces stress, and lastingly, the people who practice this on a daily basis, it reduces stress that they would ex otherwise experience throughout their day. And it trains the mind to be less reactive. When I spoke about mind training, these two techniques are prominent means of mind training. It helps you not be captured by the chattering in your mind, the thinking in your mind, the feelings that are passing through. It is mind training, mindfulness and meditation. And for certain, those who practice this do tend to feel a lot more peace and joy in their lives. A short and quick technique Something that I used uh, a lot when I was in basic training in the Army out in uh, California, I started practicing it then. Actually, I didn't know about the technique itself. I just kind of spontaneously did this. But visualization is one of the methods that is recommended for people to get out of moments of stress and distress and just get a quick break. Visualization is about finding a calming place in your mind. It may be a memory. It may be something you just kind of imagine. What I did in the army is that I visualized myself standing on a cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean with the sun setting. I have also had uh, used some visualization of uh, being in a meadow with a bubbling brook and the trees rustling in a slight breeze while I'm laying down in the grass. I visualized that. My mother said that she visualized being in this yellow room where everything was very bright and, and pleasant. People have, have um, different places that they want to go. But this is Matthew Ricard, a quote from him. Try to imagine situations that are sources of peace. Transport yourself mentally to the shores of a placid lake or to a high mountaintop overlooking a broad vista. Imagine yourself sitting serenely, your mind as vast and clear as a cloudless sky as calm as a windless ocean. Well, imagining your mind as vast and clear as a cloudless sky, that would help. But if you have difficulties with that, then go for something in your memory where you have found peace. I ask students to do this, to give some thought to places and times when they found the most peace, something that they found very calming. Many of them spoke about the beach. Water is quite often something that calms us. We find calm with the sound of water or being near water, you know, the negative ions and all that. So water quite often figures in, in uh, some people's visualization of a calming place. But all kinds of, of things could be things that you found comfort in. The point here is, is that in a moment of stress, if you can think of a calming place, you will get a little respite, a little sitting outside that stress. It may not last long, but just knowing you have the ability to reduce stress in any moment is a very encouraging thought. I do have a way to stand aside from my stress right now, take a breath, feel calmer, 
And what you'll find is, is that the stress really does go down. Not all the way, but just knowing that you have that, that means to escape it brings the stress levels down. Visualization is one of the techniques. Some people, actually a lot of people, they set the tone of the day by reading something they find inspiring. Some people will have some saying out of a poem. Many people read the Bible. There are other inspirational books, and sometimes it just has to be a, a paragraph. Something that they use to get their mind in a higher level. To set the tone for the day. And if you start at the beginning of the day with this type of inspiration, it is something that can carry on through the day. Starting the day off like that can really take a lot of the sharp edges of the day and round them. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of people start the day with reading something inspirational. It can be short. Some people will spend more time at it. But just start the day off with inspiration. Another thing that is recommended by many people, and uh, this may be more kind of the new age type of thing, but you'll find this, this practice in, uh, practiced in, in uh, standard religions, the uh, people who go to church, etc., these affirmations. Some of them say them as if in a prayer, but affirmations that you affirming something positive, such as, all will be well today, or today I will let go and let God. I actually use that one a lot because I think, wow, you know, if I've got someone truly with the intelligence of the uni universe here helping me out. Um, why not let him give me direction rather than my uh, little reasoning mind? And it is, does bring, you know, a sense of peace, letting go, surrendering. In fact, that is a major tenet of Islam, is surrendering and letting God direct your life. Believe me, he really does help. It puts you in a positive frame of mind. They say, this is, is taught by uh, many of, what do I call the, the masters and, and the wise and, and others, that the most powerful affirmation begins with, I am. I am is in the Bible. In fact, I am that I am was what God said his name was, if you will, to Moses, I am that I am. And this has been repeated by many of, of the masters, is that I am is sending a powerful message to the universe. And I am, I am love, I am peace, I am worthy. I am loved. All these affirmations using I am are said to be among the most effective to bringing a what you're saying you are into your experience. Do they work? Actually, I think they work pretty well in my experience. But this is quite often what is suggested by what I'll say, you know, the masters and the wise. I am affirmation. And many people in what you call New Agers use these as well. Actually, though, they're recommended by psychotherapists too. One of the most important things also 
in dealing with troubles and negativity and, and depressing thoughts is to change how you see it. It's called reframing, changing the frame of the picture that you're seeing. And this is mainly about standing back and seeing the bigger picture than the mountain of the problem in front of you. Standing back is perspective, changing your perspective on what's happening. When you have a problem, it tends to be where you focus are, and whatever you focus on looms larger in your mind. That's the power of focus. It also teaches you what you should be focusing on, on the things that make you feel better. If you're focusing on the problems, then those problems will loom larger. They become the mountain in front of you right now. And to lower the power of those mountains to dominate all your thinking, it is better to somehow be able to stand back and see it differently, see it in the context of something larger, right? That your troubles, first of all, are never as serious as you think they are. I have ha had many students come to my office uh, with problems and, and sorrows and, and worries, and I tell them, have you ever noticed that things tend to work out in the end? How many times you've had these problems and, and worries in the past, they're gone. You don't think about them anymore. All things must pass. Or sometimes just a, a little humor. Sometimes I'll say, well, life sucks and then you die. <laughs> can you believe that that actually can make someone feel better? Yeah, because it makes them laugh. I also say, I hope uh, the recruiter didn't tell you this was a vacation planet when you signed up to come down here. Anything like that. But the larger perspective of seeing that problems that have, have dominated your mind in the past, you no longer think about. They're gone. And the problem of right now will do the same thing. Stand back. See the larger picture. See also the many things that are good in your life. And this problem will sweep down into a molehill. And when you change how you see these type of challenges and you're able to do this, the more often these challenges will become less oppressive, less dominating, less fearful in the future. Reframing. And it will reduce many of the challenges and sorrows and at least make them more manageable. One of the most powerful quick fixes you can have in any situation is laughing. Humor is magic. When you're laughing, you can't feel bad. Laughing is such a good feeling and it takes away so much of your focus on, on the negativity. Uh, Frankl, who was in a concentration camp, said that Everything was so awful, but if they could find some occasion where they could laugh for a moment, they were transported out of that misery. Humor is truly magic. Laugh and you will feel good. And actually, there are a lot of things to laugh about. Uh, the absurdities of life really are kind of funny. And when you think about how absurd life can be, well, it's a good reason to laugh. 
I found many of the absurdities of life really uh, uh, made me laugh. And actually, some of uh, people, you know, talk about starting the day with a joke. You know, that uh, an affirmation or inspiration. Some start the day with a joke, and it supposedly makes their day go better. Laugh. You will find that there are many, many websites devoted to gratitude who say that gratitude is a major way to feel better. But gratitude is feeling better. When you're grateful, that is a good feeling. It is like appreciation. It is its own reward. Gratitude is a positive feeling. And many who, who claim that they had the peak experiences, one of the things they said, I talked about uh, love, joy, and peace, but most of them said they felt this overwhelming gratitude for just being. This gratitude for the beautiful aspect of reality. They were so grateful. And uh, Muji, you know, he, he's uh, one of the ones considered enlightened, that he's supposedly transcended his ego, but he says that he practices gratitude a lot, is that he will, his prayer will be, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for my breath. Thank you for breathing. That is part of his practice. Expressing gratitude. He says it is very powerful and everyone should practice it. Being openly thankful. And you can find reason to be grateful in many things. In fact, Finding things to be grateful for has become one of the major practices in therapy and in teaching happiness classes. Commonly, students will be asked to write down 10 things, 10 things for which they're grateful in their lives. This is being done in, in uh, elementary school as well. I've, I've had students say that they're, and their children have been taught gratitude because it's become such a well-known way of feeling better. Just writing down 10 things that you're grateful for in life right now obviously takes your mind off of the things that are bothering you. It makes you more aware of all the things you can be grateful for and you feel better. And in the happiness research, they say that people do feel better that just doing this once a week improves how people feel, and practicing it more often than that has an even bigger impact. Gratitude. Write down 10 things that you're grateful for, and you can make it a practice. And according to the research, you'll feel a lot better. Now, I've spoken a great deal about appreciation. I said that appreciation is love, it is enjoyment, and therefore joy. But practicing appreciation means learning how to focus on the things that you appreciate. You can focus on what you appreciate about people. It can be animals, nature, uh, the circumstances of your life. It is, if you, weigh, if you will, a way of opening your heart to appreciate. It brings more light into your life. Now, I am blessed to have married a woman who truly is among the uh, happier people that I know. And where I always had 
kind of a serious bent of mine, she was always appreciating things. She would mentioning, oh, look at that. Look at those flowers. Aren't they beautiful? You know, look at, look at that squirrel. You know, uh, look at that, that uh, dress or something in, in the, the window. She was always speaking of appreciating or, if, if you will, enjoying the little things in life. That really made a difference in my life. She taught me how to be aware of the little things, the appreciations of all the little things. And she certainly has made me happier. That uh, her appreciations have taught me to be aware of the little things, to appreciate them, and to look for the things that are, I think, are worthy of, of appreciation. Or just be, being aware of, of something and then say, well, actually, that's kind of nice. Appreciating it. Appreciating uh, food. And, of course, appreciating other people is something that will bring a great deal of joy. So, appreciation, learning how to smell the flowers, if you will, and enjoy the little things in life is some really good advice. I have left one more subject of a mental technique out for today. That's because it deserves to be treated by itself. That is the subject of forgiveness. Forgiveness goes deeper into the mind because so many of the things we can do to, to feel better have a problem because deep in the mind things will arise that seem to be beyond our control that will take away our good feelings and our happiness. That within our subconscious, if you will, we have to deal with some matters that are going to keep coming out and it's not going to be simply brushed away by techniques I just, I just mentioned. We're going to have to go deep into the mind and we're going to do that by exploring the subject of forgiveness. That is the next lecture. So you have a lot of techniques to practice, a lot of things that will bring you greater happiness. Hopefully you will find some of them attractive enough, enough to practice them in your lives. Namaste.